have come out onto the streets of Paris for another day of protests against the Macron government. We've seen police already trying to split up uh, some of the protests taking place. As you can see, some people behind us uh, launching smoke bombs, and they have also been throwing uh, some firecrackers into the crowd as well. They're here to protest as what they see as the rise in social inequality. In fact, they say the explosion of social inequality that's been happening since Macron came into power. They're here to demand an increase in wages, an increase in pension, uh, to uh, stop the gender gap between men and women in terms of their wages. And this is the first interprofessional day between one of the unions, the CDG, and another union, the FO, since Macron came to power. So what we have here are students, teachers, other people from across the civil service, as well as the railway workers who were on their last day of the continuous three-month strike that we've had against the reorganization of the SNCF, that is the railway here in France. Uh, we have seen some limited violence from a small group of protesters uh, known, uh, they call themselves the anti-fascists, the anti-capitalists. Uh, we saw them actually attempting to smash an assurance building, uh, an insurance building, and graffiti the outside of it. And it wasn't long after that that the police started to come out. The CRS police came out and tried to break this protest up into chunks to try and manage any potential violence. For the moment, though, all is calm, and the people here say they want President Macron to hear their calls. So far, he hasn't. Unlike other French leaders, he has ignored the calls, he has ignored the protest, and he has ploughed on ahead with his plan of government, the, the plan he says that he was elected on last year. For the moment, uh, this protest has been relatively peaceful, but we know that there are a small contingent here who are normally hell-bent on uh, achieving some sort of violence, and there is a strong police presence here. Charlotte Dubinsky, RT, Paris. Not sure if you've ever seen this movie before. It's called Children of Men. It was about essentially a post-apocalyptic type of future where no person was able to have babies anymore. For some reason, uh, everybody was sterile and couldn't have children. Believe it or not, this science fiction is now science fact as of today. DARPA has come out with a new technology that they're investing in called Gene Drive, and it actually can cause this type of scenario, believe it or not. Uh, this technology is based on CRISPR. CRISPR came out, I think, in 2012. This Gene Drive came out at the end of 2017. Basically, what's going on here is they can, I'll just explain it, by inserting the CRISPR technology into organisms, which can edit auto edit genes gene drives cut and paste the desired gene into each generation of offspring so what they're doing is they're taking the crispr technology and they're putting it literally into the genes themselves so that it will auto edit each generations of genes to where eventually the entire population has the desired genetic trait so if they want mosquitoes to have all red eyes or, or whatever they can basically introduce two mosquitoes or three mosquitoes with these red eyes and this with this CRISPR technology auto gene drives in them and eventually the entire population of mosquitoes in the entire world will have red eyes after so many generations so they could actually introduce this with other species they could do it with humans and actually cause it to where they have low sperm count or inability to have children in some way and introduce a few humans with this gene drive uh, technology, CRISPR technology, and eventually the entire human population would not be able to have children anymore. And it would actually make what happened in the sci-fi movie, which of course, when I saw this movie, I thought it seemed kind of crazy, like sort of a, a, a never happening scenario. Like, well, this is kind of silly. Why? 
why all of a sudden would people not be able to have children? Well, I just answered that question for you. There's actually a technology to do it now. Say you want to get rid of an invasive species, like get Asian carp out of the Great Lakes. All you have to do is release a gene drive that makes the fish produce only male offspring. In a few generations, there'll be no females left, no more carp. In theory, this means we could restore hundreds of native species that have been pushed to the brink. Okay, that's the good news. This is the bad news. Gene drives are so effective that even an accidental release could change an entire species, and often very quickly. Anthony James took good precautions. He bred his mosquitoes in a biocontainment lab, and he also used a species that's not native to the U.S., so that even if some did escape, they'd just die off. There'd be nothing for them to mate with. But it's also true that if a dozen Asian carp with the all-male gene drive accidentally got carried from the Great Lakes back to Asia, they could potentially wipe out the native Asian carp population. And that's not so unlikely, given how connected our world is. In fact, it's why we have an invasive species problem. And that's fish. Things like mosquitoes and fruit flies. There's literally no way to contain them. They cross borders and oceans all the time. Okay. The other piece of bad news is that a gene drive might not stay confined to what we call the target species. That's because of gene flow, which is basically a fancy way of saying that neighboring species sometimes interbreed. If that happens, it's possible a gene drive could cross over, like Asian carp could infect some other kind of carp. That's not so bad if your drive just promotes a trait, like eye color. In fact, there's a decent chance that we'll see a wave of very weird fruit flies in the near future. But it could be a disaster if your drive is designed to eliminate the species entirely. The last worrisome thing is that the technology to do this, to genetically engineer an organism and include a gene drive, is something that basically any lab in the world can do. An undergraduate can do it. A talented high schooler with some equipment can do it. Yeah. So this is the crazy stuff that DARPA is working on, other than artificial intelligence and robots. So they have robots with artificial intelligence, and when we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're not talking about some pre-programmed software that knows your moves in chess and figures them out. They've actually created uh, robots that self-learn that are able to actually beat masters at games that are not games you can actually figure out the next move. They're sort of games you have to think of what's going on on the fly and sort of feel it out. There's a certain uh, Chinese game like that, I can't remember what it was called, but there's a, a master of this game who played one of these AIs and lost. And he had been like a 10-time world champion, and he lost. And it was a game that you can't anticipate necessarily your, your opponent's moves. Uh, and this AI literally played himself 10 million times to self-learn how to beat itself, and then played the, the Grand Master and defeated him pretty easily. So this is what we're talking about here. We have AI robots that can self-learn and teach themselves anything, even create a new language. And we have technology to where they could actually edit genes and put this little auto gene uh, drive technology into the gene itself and change the human population. Is there any people that want to depopulate the world? Hmm, Georgia Guidestones ring a, ring a bell there. Uh, could there be, I mean, I mean, if you think about it, this is just really crazy. I mean, you have Elon Musk who is into creating robots and investing in it, telling you that we should not have robots that can uh, that are in the military, that, that they shouldn't have robots that are self-learning AI because they could actually eventually become aware in a sense and decide not to do what you want they could even i mean it sounds crazy but i mean just think about all this technology just to think about how it could snowball on itself i mean we have the loss of privacy now with all the surveillance essentially sort of a 1984 we have ai being used even on youtube by the way i'm not sure if you know that they actually have a black box ai that they actually put a lot of data through to decide what movie, what videos to show to you. So they actually have AI being implemented on YouTube to decide what videos to show you, self-learning AI, all right? So then you have, I mean, DARPA is investing in all these things. 
You don't think this could become sort of an apocalyptic situation? AI that could self-learning, robots, you got like the Terminator sci-fi fantasy coming to life. You have this children of men fantasy. It's not really fantasy. It's sort of a, a scary scenario coming to life where basically no one could have children potentially in the future or maybe they'll make it so there's a, they find a certain gene that's sort of attributed to you know resisting authority and decide hmm let's just uh snip that little gene and we just want docile little people that do what we want right so we change we alter that gene and we put in this gene drive CRISPR auto technology into a couple people, stick them out in the population. Three, four generations later, all humans are docile. They don't resist authority. I'm serious. This is the kind of stuff we're talking about. This is not even science fiction anymore. I mean, you, you can see how this could be very ominous for the future. You, you have to ask yourself, what the heck is going to happen, right? You have... You have nukes, you have AI, you have this CRISPR technology. Something is going to go wrong. Something is going to go very wrong in the next 50 years, just thinking about all this. And look at the type of people that run the world. You have crazy people running the world. So crazy people with this kind of technology, what do you think is going to happen? Of course, there's some. you could obviously think of some positive aspects to this technology. We can modify mosquitoes so they can't carry malaria anymore. Okay, well, that's maybe what it's going to start out as. They're going to use this technology to get rid of diseases, and cancers, and things like that. But eventually, you're going to get some crazy person that has control of this technology. And they're going to introduce something far worse into society, you know. And uh, uh, the sky's the limit with this stuff, man. The sky's the limit. I don't know why anybody else has done videos on this, really. I haven't seen anybody talk about this. This is very crazy to me that... I'm one of the first ones. I mean, this guy, the Outer Light's talking about it. That's why I watch his channel sometimes. He comes out with some really strange content that a lot of people are missing. And he happens to be, I think, from New Zealand or Australia. So maybe that's why he also had a, sort of a leg up on this. That DARPA was doing this over in New Zealand. Uh, you know, people are... People are talking about what this could be used for in a positive manner. But, I mean, seriously... We're talking about DARPA using it. <laughs> DARPA. Hmm. I wonder what they could use it for. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agent. What are What are they defending by modifying, uh, you know, the genes of animals or humans or something? What are they modifying? That's a good question to ask, isn't it? I think it is. I just thought of something very crazy. Could it be possible that they've already used this technology? Or maybe it's just they've used other things to sort of mind control and change people in society. And this would be sort of like the ultimate weapon they could use to control populations is they could cut out genes they don't like, you know, genes that might be more tied to being resistive or whatever you know, c control populations that way? That's a, it's an interesting question. And, and you have to ask yourself what they will do even farther on. You know, will they be adding genes? Will they be adding attributes? Will they be making hybrids? You know, this is crazy stuff, but this is actually becoming science now. It's no longer science fiction.